Shirley, if you were in the market for a new site this year, you have either come across of the HHA Tetra Max Rise X3 or the UV slider. In this video, I'm gonna go over the key features on both of these sites, maybe which one fits your budget, fits your needs, and which one you're gonna put on your bow this year. All right guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So today in front of me, I have two sites. These are two of the more popular sites on the market, in my opinion, and these are really the only two sites that I have a ton of experience shooting. That's why I feel confident enough to make this video kind of comparing these two sites. Maybe one of these sites is gonna go in your bow this year, and hopefully this video helps you with that. I'm gonna go over a lot of stuff, price, scope sizes, pins, sight tapes, adjustability, ease of use, weight, it does it come with a light, length of the bar, the bow use, the color, accessories, uh, all this sorts of stuff. I have an entire notebook down written here, and I'm just gonna go over the key features on this, and you can make the decision on which one of these sites is best for you, because I've gotten a lot of comments, you know, ever since I put this HHA back on my bow, why I'm not shooting the UV slider. And then when I'm shooting the UV slider, I get a lot of comments, how come I'm not shooting the HHA? So this is gonna be a comparison video of these two. I'll start it off. I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these sites in your bow. They are both high-end sites on the market, and they're both gonna fill the needs of you as a bow hunter. Let me go over both these sites. We'll start and uh, yeah, you can make a decision at the end of this video. Maybe at the end of this video, I'll tell you which one is going on my bow this year. Let's go over design, um, function, fit, function, finish. Um, just the generic, like you wanna put your hands on it. How does it feel? How does it look? Is it cool? Is it bulky? Is it clunky? Does it take up room? And we're gonna start here with the HHA site to start. This is the old tried and true design that HHA has had for quite a while now. Um, they have continually revamped this and put more time and effort into it, adding new features to it, making it very, very easy to use. So this is, ease of use on this site is super easy. You have one hand operation. You can just loosen your little tightening wing nut on the side here and the whole site slides very, very easy, very silky smooth. You can also lock this down. And if in a pinch you needed to, you can override that lock just by spinning it. You're not gonna do any damage. We're talking all metal components in here, brass components. And again, I've never had an issue durability wise with an HHA site. The fit and finish of it, it is a very nice, well-built site. There's nothing, there's no machine marks on of it. There's nothing really out of place on it. There's no rough edges. Everything has been very well taken care of. The powder coating, seracoding, uh, anodization, whatever they're using for this, it is very well done. There's no imperfections in it. So fit, finish, functionality of the site, I'll give it an A. It's definitely top of the list um, on when you buy this and you're gonna spend $510 on it, you're gonna get a $510 piece of equipment and you expect it to be nice, you expect it to be done right, and it is. Now when we talk about the Ultraview site, Ultraview came out with this last year. This is the UV slider um, fit, finish, design of it. Again, I'll give it an A. This whole block right here is so sleek. It's designed well. Not only is it designed to function correctly, but it's, it's designed to kind of look cool, right? Um, everything here is in one tiny small package. There's not a bunch of stuff hanging around outside of it. Um, everything is just kind of centrally located on this. And then the rail as itself is separate. There's not a lot of moving parts to it. And I think it's just a cool design. It's new, it's edgy, good for them. Now, when it comes to the durability of this UV slider, I don't have a year of shooting this site under my belt because it's not even a year old, but I did shoot this all of last year during hunting season, carried it around in the elk woods, all the whitetail woods. Never had a problem with this. It never came out of sight. I never had issues with things coming loose, coming undone, vibrating loose. So for $600, which is a hefty price tag to pay for a piece of bow equipment, I think you're getting a really good quality product. Fit finish, I think it looks cool. Again, just like I said with HHA, there's no real sharp edges, there's nothing. Everything is well done, well designed, and well executed. It just It's a nice looking site, it functions very well and uh, I had absolutely no problems with this site. So we have price point on this. These two sites are gonna be 
on in the higher end of price points. They are both top of the heap when it comes to sites. They are both in that upper echelon class. You're going to get what you pay for. So you're going to pay $510 for the HHA Tetra Max Rise X3 and you're going to get a $510 product because it is very well done. And then for the UltraView slider, you're going to pay $599.99, and it is well done. So we're going to go over scope sizing. The HHA, Tetra, Rise, Max, X. We're just going to call this the X3 for this video because the mouth, the hand, the, the mouthful that that is is just. I'm going to butcher it at least some point during this. So we're just going to call this the X3. The X3 comes in, comes with an inch and five eight scope housing. Um, and when you actually measure it out of usable length inside of the scope housing from it inside edge to inside edge, it comes out to be like an inch and nine sixteenths. So you're right there at it, that inch and five eighths. I would say they do a good job of marketing it. It is exactly how it comes. And if you can see here in the HHA, you have the entire scope housing and there's really no clutter. You have the bubble at the bottom and then you have the pins which are offset to the side and the adjustment on the pins is located outside of the scope housing itself. So it does give you a perfect cylindrical um, scope to look through with your peep. Now, moving on to the UltraView, a little bit different. UltraView does not do a great job um, with having a perfectly cylindrical inside of their scope housing. They have taken the opposite approach. The scope on the outside is perfectly cylindrical for the most part, except for the little set screws. Um, but inside of the scope housing itself, it looks like a big scope, but it actually doesn't have as much real estate in here as you would think. The actual usable distance inside the scope from the edge of the pins where the pin block is, where you adjust your pins all the way over to the other side of the scope housing is an inch and five sixteenths. So you're looking like a quarter inch less when you look at these two. So the HHA, although it has a smaller scope, actually has more real estate and less clutter inside of the scope. Um, which does give you a little better sight picture if that's what you're going for. The UltraView, again, it's not perfectly circle, circular on the inside, and there are some options out there. Um, I've gotten this off of Facebook. You guys have asked me about it a bunch. I will link that in the description below. But it just snaps over the light cap on the back, and it does give me a good circle to line my peep up with. But UltraView actually does, when you get the UV slider, it comes with their no light or their world archery cap, which does make a circle. And you just pop this light kit off the back, put this no light or world archery cap on it. And now you do have a circle. As I'm sitting here editing, well, I was editing the video. I came back up to the shop because I'm talking about the options that you have for your UV slider for the circle mount. And I totally failed to mention that UltraView does have this little snap ring that goes inside of the light kit to make it a circle. Um, me personally, I've always found my peeps to line up better when I've used that 3D printed piece on the outside, but I figured I would mention that as well. But it does take up a lot of the inside. Let me actually measure that. So measure it on the dial calipers and it comes in just under an inch and a half. Um, so yeah, usable space inside the UV slider, not as much as the HHA. I know I can shoot both of these scopes very accurate. It's just the UltraView does take some getting used to because again, for the longest time, um, I've shot HHAs, which have a slightly different look inside of their scope housing. Is one right or wrong? I don't really know. I think it's personal preference. Um, and I shot this all hunting season last year. I do think it is a good scope. I don't think what, what takes away from the inside of it is that big of a deal. Pin sizes. So the HHA X3 comes in two pin sizes. You have the 10 thousandths pin, which is what this one is. It's a three pin, 10 thousandths, and you can get it in a 19 thousandths, kind of depending on what pin size you want. Um, I know a lot of people like shooting smaller pins to be more accurate at some of the longer ranges. Me personally, um, I like shooting a slightly bigger pin than 10 thousandths. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I think once you start getting out to like 80, 100 yards, and you think a 10,000th pin versus a 19,000th pin is gonna make that much of a difference, I don't. 
The UltraView slider, this one comes with a one pin option. It is 15 thousandths, so that's the only size pin that they offer for this is 15 thousandths. And I want to say the middle three are 15 and the bottom one is 10 thousandths because that bottom pin at the very bottom of the housing, the bonus pin as you would, um, it looks a little smaller than the other three, but I don't know that to be backed. Um, so, but 15 thousandths pin is what they have. It's kind of happy medium between a little too big and a little too small. Um, again, I think I shoot both of these equally as well. So I don't really think pin size matters as much, but if it does for you, HHA, you have options, UltraView, you have what they have. This HHA X3 comes as a three pin and all three pins are individually adjustable on the sight block. So you can move all three of these pins wherever you want in the housing, up, down, wherever, right? So like if I were setting this site up to go to something like TAC, I would move this bottom pin as low in the housing as I could get it right over the top of my bubble for some of those longer range shots because it's going to help me maximize the distance I can get out of my setup. Um, and then I would just get my other two pins, like let's say 30 and 40 or 20 and 30 and set those accordingly in the site. So that way when I went to home base, I had that yeah, option. UltraView and their pins, they took a little bit of a different approach. The bottom pin, which is sitting here, which is like your bonus pin, which is going to be the one that's going to give you the maximum clearance and maximum distance out of your sight tape. That one is set just barely over the top of the bubble, like I like setting my stuff up. And then the middle pin of the three pins that come in horizontally, the middle pin is fixed. It's stuck in the housing. You cannot adjust it. The only way you adjust it is actually by moving the rail itself up and down. That's the only way you adjust that one. The other two pins, top and bottom, the two green ones in here, those are independently adjustable up and down. We've gone over scope sizes, we've gone over pin sizes and pin configurations. Now let's get over sight tapes. Um, I think both companies do a really good job with their sight tapes. These sites are easy to set up. They are not overly complicated um, and they both come with enough sight tapes that is going to cover pretty much everybody on the market. HHA has them from 20 to 185 yards, depending on how fast your setup is. And they come with enough setup tape options here to cover pretty much anybody. And then UltraView does the same. They come with right and left-handed side tapes. And I'll get to that in a second. And I've found that all of these work for the setups that I shoot. Um, and they can range anywhere from 20 to 140 yards. Now, I think if you need to shoot something past that, you could probably make a sight tape, um, which is what I've done in the past. I've had other videos on how to make your own sight tapes. And me personally, I find those sight tapes to maybe be a little bit more accurate than the pre-measured ones from any company I've used, um, not just these two. Sight tape configurations, HHA has their patented wheel um, on the side with their sight tape on the wheel itself. 2.1 inches of silky smooth travel which they do have a really good travel on it. And just one full twist on this, you can almost go from top to bottom. So I do think the gearing on this site is very good. So with the UltraView sight tapes, they have two mounting options. You can mount it either on the right side or the left side of the site. So you can have, for me on this configuration, I have my sight tape on the inside because that's what I'm looking at down the bow when I'm going to make my adjustment. And then on the outside, I have my setup tape. So if I ever do change, you know, arrow setups or whatever, I have that sight tape, the setup tape already on there. I can just go back and references to get my new sight tape. Continuing with pin indicators, the new HHA X3, they have upgraded their pin indicators for the longest time when I shot a Tetra, it was one indicator on the sight wheel. So when you had it at 20, I knew it was 20, 30, 40 in my scope. And then after 40, that's when I started dialing. Um, and I had my one indicator on there to let me know where I was at. They have since added on this new X3, three sight pin indicators um, for your setup wheel. So once you get your pin set up, you can set the indicators to those correlating yardages. And then no matter wherever you're spinning your wheel, you know the exact distance for each one of the pins in your housing. So if you scroll your bottom wheel to let's say, I'll have it at 80 here. My next one up is at 71 and a half. So I know my middle pin 71 and a half and my top one is 62. So 
you can set it up that way where no matter where you spin your wheel, you have an indication for each one of those pins. I thought HHA needed to do that for a while and I'm pretty happy and excited that they did do it. UltraView, same kind of option. You have your pin indicators, just like the scope, the middle pin and the bottom pin, the bonus pin, those two are fixed, but you have the option to move the top indicator or the bottom indicator to get your yardages correct. I will say neither one of these straight from out of the package um, are very easy to see. Uh, this HHA one has a stainless pin and outside, you know, it's not hard to see. It's very sharp, so you can be very exact on your sight tape, but it would be nice to see them anodize this a different color, like a brighter color for quick reference marks. I have used something like a neon paint pen to paint these in the past, and that's actually what I have here on the UV slider. I repainted all the indicators a different color um, because the stock color that they come with on the site they sent me, um, I think they have made some revisions since then, but were kind of dull, and I kind of lost them in the site tape itself. So um, I made some modifications to it, but um, definitely very sharp and they're very easy to get exact and precise yardages. So when it comes to sight tape, sight wheels, sight setups, I don't think either one of these is better than the others. They have two different designs um, and how they go about doing it, but both of them have a full travel from top to bottom with one turn. The HHA and the UltraView, you can go from top to bottom. They both have very coarse knobs, so um, you can dial the whole way. And they both have a lock on their knob system. UltraView has the lever on the top here. You can activate and move and tighten down and you can actually override and go through that. And then HHA has their little spin nut on the outside. Spin it a little bit, unlocks it, lock it back down. It's tight, but if you needed to, you could press through it. Adjustability of the site, we kind of talked about that. Um, they're both easy to adjust, easy to get your site tapes easy to move up and down through the site scale. So we kind of covered over that in the last section. We're going to talk about adjustability as in the axes of these sites. Um, these are both very similar as in they really only have two axis adjustments. So HHA does have a second and a third axis adjustment. The second axis adjustment is right here in the front, which will actually move the scope independent of the site rail and they have the third axis, which is going to articulate your sight this way for your uphill and downhill shots. But they do not have a first axis adjustment um, that you can make. It's pretty much how it comes from HHA is going to be how vertical your sight rail is. I've shot these for a long time. I've shot them out to long distances, 130, 140 yards, and I've had no problem. They've always been correct for me. And then going on to ultra views, I know UltraView does have a first and second axis adjustment um, on their site rail, but they do not have an independent second axis adjustment for the scope from the rail. So really it's only two axes that you're adjusting. Um, if you are making your bubble adjustment on your UltraView slider, you're actually adjusting the site rail itself up and down. So it's kind of more like a first axis adjustment and they don't have a second axis adjustment and then vice versa where the HHA has a second axis where you can individually articulate the scope from the rail, but they don't have a way to level the rail. So, and then UltraView does have their third axis adjustment on the side, so you can do the same thing. You can adjust the um, swing of the scope for your up and your downhill shots. I have not had a problem with either one of these and their axi, axisy, axi, axial, axial? I've not had a hard time adjusting the axes. Ax Dude, that is a tough word. I don't even know if that's a word. I haven't had a problem adjusting either one of these and them both being accurate from 20 out to 100 or exceeding 100. So um, there are other sites in the market, like more like the target stuff. And there are other hunting sites in the market where you can individually adjust first, second and third axis. With these two sites, I haven't had a problem only adjusting two of the three axes to get them to shoot well. So it might be a hang up, but it hasn't been a hang up for me. Um, and I don't think, think it's that big of a deal, if I'm honest. Ease of use, ease of setup, 
both pretty easy to use. The only thing that I will say is in the current configurations in the way that they were sent to me, the way that I have them, the ultra view to adjust your windage and your up and down. So to move the scope itself up and down on the rail and left and right to get your windage, it is all toolless. The adjustment for your windage is actually this dual knob technology they're calling it. You pull this out and you can dial this left or right and it will move your scope left or right to get your windage correctly. Whereas HHA has the first little set screw in the front here, the cap head bolt where you can make coarse and micro adjustments. Um, again, I don't think it's, once you set your windage, um, you're not adjusting it too much. I don't really think maybe from day to day, it might be a click or two here or there. Usually when I'm hunting, I'm not adjusting my windage. So having a toolless windage adjustment is convenient. It's nice. It's not necessary in my opinion, but I will say of the two, the UltraView one being toolless, it is a little more convenient to make those changes. All right, moving on. Weight, when it comes down to weight. Um, as bow hunters, we're kind of conscious about how much things weigh, how much our bow weighs. Um, so I have gone through and I've weighed both of these sites just as they are here without the uh, bracket to mount it on the bow. Um, and if that's something that's going to make or break it for you, I am sorry to tell you, but I don't have that information. The HHA X3, this comes in at a weight of 360 grams or 12.7 ounces. So um, not a particularly heavy sight, not a particularly light sight. The UltraView slider as it comes with the light kit already installed onto the scope with the UV3 XL scope. Um, this one is going to come in at 357 grams, which is 12.6 ounces. So 12.7 ounces, 12.6 ounces. I think we're kind of splitting hairs on weight on them, but the UV slider does get a nod because it is a tick lighter. And if you want to make it lighter yet, you can always take the light kit out and put the uh, no light ring or the world archery ring in the back of it. And it's going to weigh 338 grams or 11.9 ounces. So if you do want to save weight and make it even lighter, um, you can put the no light cap in the back and that's going to make this site just under 12 ounces. It comes to lights, um, the HHA X3 does not come with a light. This is how it comes factory from the package, but you do have the option and the mounting bracket to mount a light onto the top of it. Straight out of the package, no light. They do have an adjustable or a manual rheostat um, essentially what it is is a ring. You can just loosen this ring up and what it's going to do is expose more fiber. So on a bright sunny day like it is today outside, you could close this off a little bit, take some of the light away from the fibers, kind of dim your pins from getting too blown out. And then when you're out hunting in the tree stand and you know, late November and you're trying to get every little bit of light into that fiber as possible, you can open this thing all the way up and hunt pretty much right up until dark, until the end of legal shooting light. I've never had a problem with either one of these not being bright enough at legal shooting light, whether it's in the morning or the evening to make a shot, or if you're sitting in like a hunting blind where you're not getting a lot of ambient light like you are in a tree stand, that's where a light can really add a benefit if they're legal in your area. The UltraView slider does come with a light kit directly installed with the UV3 XL scope. I believe all of their scopes as you buy them come with a light kit on it. You can turn it on. It has, uh, you can raise the intensity. You can lower the intensity. Right now the bubble is lit up on this. You can hold the button down for a second and unlight the bubble, make it dimmer. Um, so there's a little bit of different options. You can play with the light itself, but UltraView does offer the option. If you don't want a light, you can run the no light cap. So if you're in an area or a region or you particularly don't like a light, you don't have to have it. Um, let's talk about bar length because some of you guys like to run your scopes, you know, a mile in front of your riser, especially with the dovetail. I'm guilty. I've done it. And I actually find more benefit running it a little closer to my riser. It really tightens up my pin gap a little bit. And I feel like it makes me more accurate because the further you get your two points, your peep and your scope further away from each other, the more finicky they are of getting them lined up. Um, so sometimes it takes me a little longer to get lined up. And with a 30 inch draw length, you know, you 26 inch draw length people, you don't quite have that problem. So if I ran my scope all the way out and had my peep, you know, way away in the string, could run into issues. Plus my pin gap's going to get bigger the further I run my sight away from my riser. So hot tip, 
You want tighter pins, run your scope closer to your scope, tighter to your bow. As they come stock on the X3, this comes with the short bar option. And the short bar option really only has three settings where you can set this off of the riser. It's a one inch gap between the first and the last one. So each one of those is a half an inch forward or back, but you really only have three options. Now HHA does offer a long bar option, which is, this is an old Tetra Max site, same bar, you can attach it on and now you can have a long bar option. And with this long bar option, it offers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's three inches of total travel from front to back. The UltraView slider as it comes out of the box is really the only bar option they have, or at least for this configuration. Five dimple holes, so you have five individual settings forward and back with a maximum span of two inches and three eighths of an inch gap between the first and the last one. So as they come out of the package with the UltraView slider, you get just a little bit more travel, um, a little bit more options on where you want to put the scope in relation to your riser. Uh, speaking of sight bars, uh, with all the companies coming out now, all the bow manufacturers making something different, Matthews has their bridge lock, Hoyt has the Picatinny rail. A lot of other companies are still just going with the traditional mounted on the side of your bow option. Both of these companies do a really good job I wouldn't say conforming, but like collaborating with those bow manufacturers to make sure that their sights are compatible. So both of these right here are just the standard mounted on the side of your bow option, because that's what I shoot with an Elite. But both of them have the options to shoot a Hoyt and a bridge lock with it. Start with the HHA. This is the sight that you're gonna get for your standard mounted on the side of your bow and the bridge lock version. Now the bridge lock does fit this dovetail or this this dovetail fits into the bridge lock very well. It's almost like HHA and Matthews, you know, collaborated to make sure that it does fit. It wouldn't surprise me being as those companies are located not that far from each other. So for the fact that both of those companies are making sure that each one of their products, you know, uh, work with each other, that's smart. If you run this right now, this is the side mount option. If you do want to run this in a bridge lock, HHA has the bracket in the front here on the uh, universal slide mount where you can, or the infinite slide mount, you flip this over, you take it all apart, take the scope off, you flip that bracket over, you screw your second axis back into that bracket. And what that is going to do is it's gonna move your sight closer to the sight or the scope closer to the sight itself, which will give you your left and right clearance. For example, this is the old uh, two inch housing that I had off of my Tetra when I was shooting the Matthews bridge lock and it does have it. You can see how far it moves that scope in closer to the site to make up for the windage. So you still have full throw on your windage adjustment left and right on your windage bar. Right out of the package, you can get this and it'll work. And then if you change bows and you don't wanna run it in the bridge lock, you have that option of just taking a site and moving to another bow. Now they do offer a uh, bow rail mount option for the Hoyts or any of the companies that have the Picatinny rails on the front of their risers. You can get that directly when you order this, you can order it as the Hoyt option or the Picatinny rail option. And instead of having a straight bar, you're actually just gonna have the Picatinny rail mount that goes into the third axis block, and then you're good to go. UltraView has three different sight bar options depending on the bow you wanna shoot. So this is the standard put it on the side of your bow option, which will fit any bow on the market because um, you can use that block for anything. And then they offer one that is shorter here that is just like they offer for HHA and a lot of manufacturers are offering now is a Picatinny rail mount version of this. And then the Matthews bridge lock version, if that's the route you wanna go with. This bar does fit in it, but it won't make it with your windage. So they actually have a bar that kicks out a little further, you know, closer to the scope and then up, which makes up for the distance um, that the bridge lock is taking away because you're not mounting it on the side of your bow. So both sites companies have different options to fit the bow manufacturer of your choice. But I think in these two configurations, you can mount these on any bow. So if you're unsure, a universal bow mount will work. Both of these right here, I have in a black finish. The UltraView has just a little bit more of a black matte finish. The scope that comes on it is a flat black. It looks, in my opinion, really sweet. It's simple. Um, and I think black goes with any color. So any color riser you have, 
on your bow, whatever, strings, whatnot. A black sight is just black matches everything. So it looks cool. HHA did come out with some options this year. So if you want to get one to match maybe the riser of your bow, like you have a greenish riser bow, they have some options on their website where you can get these in different Cerakoted colors, not just the sight wheel, I'm talking the whole sight itself. Uh, that's really cool that they have those different colorways and those different options. So if you're somebody who really wants to like camouflage your stuff or really, you know, go the extra mile and match all of your gear, you can do that with HHA. All right, accessories. We kind of touched on it a little bit earlier in this video. Accessories for the HHA site, there's quite a few of them. They make, we'll go back to the color, they make different wheels that on this Tetra Max Rise X3 version, you can remove these wheels and change them out. They have some colored wheels that you can get to really, you know, like colorway your bow. Accessory light kit that you can put on the top here that has a UV light or an ultraviolet light um, to light up your pins that's not going to spook any animals. And with these HHA scopes, you can run a lens kit in the front. Um, I know they have those available on their website, so check them out. Different sight bar options, like I said, if you want to run a longer one or if you wanted to get this one and run a Picatinny rail mount on it, you can take this off, put a different one on. But uh, accessory wise, I mean, a couple things here and there um, to really make this site maxed out with the light kit and everything, you can do it. Ultra view accessory wise, there's really not much you need to add to this site. It comes with a light, it comes without a light. You have all your pins, it comes with different color bubble options. So if you wanna run a red bubble, a blue bubble, or a green bubble, you have that option. Different sight tapes, different rails, but colorways, there's not, like I said, not much color-wise you can change on this. You can get different color archery, or USA, or world archery caps, or the no light caps, or whatever you wanna call these. You can get, you can get different colors of these. Um, I have a couple options for some other ones. I have a black one for some reason. Let's see what else I got. I got a red one, and I think I had a pink one in here at some point, but you can get different no light cap options to kind of color size your bow. And then if you want, they are offering two different silicone uh, wheel colors. So if you want to get something that maybe if you're shooting orange strings and you want to shoot an orange wheel on your slider, you can do that too. Um, they do have some options where you can kind of accessorize it and color it the way you want. But really this, as it comes, it for $600, it should come with everything. And it does. It comes with the light, it comes with everything that you need. Whereas the HHA, a little cheaper, but you're going to have to add a light kit to it if that's what you want. I think I've covered most everything about these two sites. I'm sure I'm leaving something out, and if I am, drop a comment down below, let me know, I'll answer those questions. Overall, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these sites. You will see me shoot each one of these sites at least some point throughout the year, um, because I do think they're both really good options. All right, so I teased you guys at the beginning of the video, which one of these sites am I going to choose for hunting season this year? And again, I will preface it just like I said in the beginning part of the video, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these sites, whether you're team HHA, team UltraView, or just team I like good stuff. Both of these sites are going to fill that void. When it comes to what am I gonna put on my bow, coming up I have Mountain Archery Fest, Total Archery Challenge, um, some 3D stuff during the season, and then getting ready for hunting season this year, I'm probably going to lean more towards the UltraView slider. Now, that doesn't mean I'm gonna stick with it, but in my opinion, this site, it's just, it has everything that I want. It has a light kit built into it. I have bought the ring, like I said, a little 3D printed piece to go over the back of it to solve the circular problem that I had with my peep and getting it lined up. And I just like the fit, the function of it. It just, it slides super nice. It's very easy to work one-handed. The dual-sided sight tapes. There's just a lot of things that I really do like about this site and not much that I don't. The only things that I didn't like about the site were those indicator pins and the anodized color that they originally came with, but I was able to fix that problem with a few highlighted paint pens and just lighten those up a little bit. Thanks for watching the video, guys. My name is Jeff Cordero. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit that like button down below and we'll catch you on the next video.